Hey guys, Robbie Falk here from beautiful Duty Noble Field on an absolutely perfect day for baseball uh, here in Starkville, Mississippi. It was a fantastic weather day here, about in the 60s, mid 60s, sunshine all day. I absolutely love the fact that it is six o'clock and the sun is right in my face. Uh, I've been waiting for this for months. The seasonal depression is gone. Baseball season is in full swing. We're about to warm up a little bit. It's absolutely incredible, and uh, I'm here for it. As far as the sports are concerned this week, Mississippi State baseball, a really good week. Back-to-back uh, -back good weeks for the Bulldogs, by the way. They're on a nine-game winning streak, which is the longest since 2021, so you're starting to see this team come out of its shell a little bit. Now, they haven't played a great schedule, but this is a team that didn't do – things well against anybody last year. It didn't matter who they were playing. They couldn't pitch it. They couldn't defend. Offense was okay the last couple of years, but pitching and defending was the big issue for them. It doesn't really matter uh, when you look at the schedule who Mississippi State has played at this point. The fact that they are competing with the strike zone, throwing strikes, getting ahead of counts, not walking a lot of guys, not hitting a lot of guys, not booting the ball around defensively. They're making plays in the field. That is a tremendous step forward for Mississippi State. And uh, there's going to be a lot of people that's going to be skeptical of this team, and you have that right to be skeptical. But the fact that they're doing these little things right at this point I think is a huge step forward, and that's where you got to start. Um, they're in this spot because of, you know, you know where they are with the, the coaching staff not being able to sustain the success in Omaha. Um, they're in their spot for the reason, but you have to give the staff and these players credit now for fixing a, a lot of those issues, it seems like, and moving forward with it. Now you're about to hit SEC play, and you're going to have to do those things well there as, what, uh, there as well to get yourself back in a position for competing for postseason and competing for hosting spots and things like that. So, you know, we'll, we'll – talk about that when that time comes but for now just speaking on what's happened this week it was a big week for the Bulldogs they got down four nothing against Southern Miss earlier in the week on Tuesday in Pearl and I thought the fight of the team to get back in that ball game scuffled at the plate a little bit got back in it and eventually took the lead and the work of the bullpen in that game was just masterful to go eight innings and not allow a single run after those four runs early in the ball game that was a big win for State Southern Miss comes out this weekend and beats La Tech. So th I think that's going to be a good Southern Miss team. That's a good non-conference win for you. Might end up being your best non-conference win before it's all said and done. Uh, but the Bulldogs started off the week that way and then faced an Evansville team that can really swing the bats, one of the nation's leaders in doubles this season. They have a, a powerful lineup. And I thought Mississippi State controlled them most of the week. They were able to get on base a good bit this weekend. But keeping them on base and not allowing big innings was a, was the, the key for the Bulldogs this week. I thought you saw a great outing from Nate Dome. Still want to see you know how he comes back from whatever was bothering him late in that ball game. It was kind of scary to see him, you know, shaking off his arm a little bit. And hopefully that's not a long-term issue, and that was just a, you know something that's just bothering him for a couple of days. You can get him back out there because. Thought he pitched really well on Friday night. Thought Cal Steven had a second straight really good performance on Saturday. And then Drangelo Sanja uh, on Sunday comes out, gives up three runs on a three-run homer in the fourth inning. Other than that, he was flat dominant. Ten strikeouts, I think walked three guys. Um, and the, the fourth inning was really the only inning where he encountered any kind of issues. Came out there and gave up a couple hits, gave up a three-run home run. And that's the only time that Evansville really threatened this game. So I don't really hold that inning against him uh, for his performance. Four really good starts from Durangelo now in non-conference play. He was 3-0, and had a no decision in the game that he pitched really well also. And uh, I don't think he gave up other than today. Uh, I don't think he gave up more than one run in the other three starts. So you have right now three really good starting pitchers on the weekends. Now can Mississippi State stack that and do it in postseason or in SEC play? Because if they're getting those starts in SEC play where they're getting into the sixth, seventh inning with their starters and they've held teams to two or three runs or less, uh, I think you have a really good chance to get into postseason this year. And I think State's been trying to find even two starters for the weekend in the last two years and haven't been able to do it. 
if you can have these three guys go for you on the weekend and you feel good about all three of them, I think State is in great position because I really feel like this team's going to hit. They, they haven't at times this year, but they're coming out of it a little bit here uh, this weekend. And uh, that's another thing I wanted to talk about is what they did offensively this weekend. Saturday, now Friday they did leave some opportunities out there, but a lot of it was kind of tough luck. Yesterday on Saturday, in the win for the Bulldogs, really timely hitting from some guys. Uh, D- Dakota Jordan has just been fantastic. I- I'm going to be shocked if he's not the SEC Player of the Week. Four home runs, hit a home run in four straight ball games. Had another one on Sunday in the first inning. They had to walk him three times. Three straight intentional walks to Dakota Jordan. He is uh, really starting to see the ball well. This is about the time last year when he did it too. Uh, If you remember, got benched in the middle of non-conference play, just wasn't seeing the ball very well. Then he took over in left field and never let up and was second or third best hitter in SEC play as a true freshman. I think you're starting to see that with him again. He's starting to see it better, starting to see spin a little bit better, and is becoming a better all-around hitter for Mississippi State. And especially uh, from a power hitting standpoint, he's got eight home runs and Mississippi State as a team has, I think, 12 or 13. So, uh, But they're starting to come around. Hunter Hines had a big home run, finally got his first home run of the season on Saturday. Connor Hijack hit one on Sunday. It's starting to warm up a little bit. The bats are starting to come alive. They're starting to get a little more confidence. If you're pitching it well, you're defending well, and now this team starts hitting it well, now you start talking about a team that's getting back on track. And I don't want to jump to you know too many conclusions on this team and start – projecting Omaha or anything like that but I do think that you see some major improvements and major improvements may still mean that this team is not a great team Uh, we we don't know yet but I do know that they do not look like a bottom of the SEC team right now this looks like a team that can compete a little bit in games they have not been competitive in SEC games in the last two years you know they've they've lost a ton of games uh, by run rule, they've won nine games the last two years. You know, I, I think this is going to be a better team. How much better from a win-loss perspective is the question uh, because they're facing a gauntlet of the schedule. They have LSU coming up this weekend, which is a top three team nationally, I think. Um, you got Florida. You got Texas A&M. The first three weekends are brutal. Mississippi State coming out of that with two or three wins would feel like a win for them. But uh, you really need to – to get as many games as you possibly can. This is a team that wants to get in postseason play. They need to get in postseason play. You you really don't need to go three straight years without the NCAA tournament. And that's that's kind of what they're fighting here. But you love to see the fight in this team, the confidence they're playing right now. This is what they were expected to look like against this schedule. This is not a daunting schedule for them. They haven't played, uh, you know, the gauntlet in non-conference play. They haven't played – very many teams that are going to make postseason. So it it was a schedule built to get the team's confidence level up, to get some wins up before SEC play. And after that three and four start, they're getting there. I think if they can get through these next two games with wins, I think that this is a record that was going to be acceptable for Mississippi State fans through non-conference play. You know, four losses. If you can get to 14 and four going into SEC play, I think people would have ex- accepted that because you're going to stub your toe a couple of times. They would love to have those games back. They just weren't able to take them. But, um, you know, it, I think it's good for Mississippi State to go on this run here. Nine straight wins. They have a chance to get ten coming up this week, uh, this week as they take on South Alabama and New Orleans over in Biloxi. So you folks down on the coast, make sure you get your tickets to that and, and go check that out. Always uh, a fun time for Mississippi State fans on the coast, and it's uh, it's usually you know pretty packed. They're usually sold out in those games, so uh, you know we'll see what those those look like. And then you got coming up this weekend LSU uh, in a three game set, and that's an LSU team that they did lose on Sunday, I think, to Xavier, but they're playing good baseball once again. A team that's going for a national championship repeat. They were outstanding last year. I don't know if they have the guns to do that two years in a row. Uh, there's no Paul Skeens, there's no Dylan Cruz or anybody like that, but um, you know they do have a great recruiting class that just came in. They have transfers, Luke Holman, uh, uh, their Friday night starter, who Mississippi State was after from Alabama. 
Um, that's going to be a, a tough guy, a tough task for Mississippi State on Friday, but should be fun. Um, so that's all for baseball. Let's talk about a little bit of basketball uh, before we get out of here. And, and the Bulldogs just can't find a win right now when they need it the most. You're talking about a team that for the last two weeks we've been saying they just need one more win, just one more win. They haven't been able to get it. And uh, Sunday was another, or Saturday was another uh, just gut wrenching loss for this team. Two in a row at home that they've lost in this kind of fashion. Go to overtime with South Carolina, and uh, the Gamecocks were able to pull, pull that one out 93 to 89. It was a heartbreaker for Mississippi State. Just could not get the stops when they needed to get them. And this is a team that prides itself on its defense, and it's just not playing at its best right now on the defensive end. Um, the offense has come a long way. Josh Hubbard is a big reason for that. Five straight games of 20 or more points. But State's lost all of them. They, they haven't been able to win those games, um, with the exception of LSU, I guess. Uh, they've lost four in a row. And you're now, I, I wouldn't say limping into the tournament, because they've been competitive. And every one of these games, with the exception of maybe the, the Auburn game, that's, that's really kind of been the only game that they weren't in it the entire way. But they were in the game against Kentucky. They were in the game against uh, South Carolina, obviously. And then A&M, they went down early, but were able to get back in it, scratch and claw there. They got a win this week. They, they're taking on LSU in the first round of the SEC tournament. Again, a win, I think, securely – gets you into the tournament. I, I think that's all you need. And I still think that this team can get in where they are, but it just doesn't look good if you've lost five consecutive ball games coming into the NCAA tournament. Um, and you do have, you know, a couple of bad losses in there. State needs to win this one. Thursday, 11 a.m. in Nashville. I'll be there. Um, probably have a, a post game or something from there. We'll, we'll talk about it. But uh, it's a big one for them and for their NCAA chances. This is a team that a few weeks ago was a shoe in and now you're, you're searching for that final win. It's been a very difficult schedule and I, I think you have to give credit to Mississippi State for, you know, fighting in these games, but they just don't have that extra win. They really need that extra win. And the, the one that kills you right now is that Southern loss that you have. You win that ball game, we're not even having this conversation. I don't think we ever would have had this conversation. I think state safely in but that one's pulling you down a few rpi or net points and um, it's, it's hurting you right now um, and there's been other opportunities I and mean, they've had chances to uh, eradicate that but all these quad one opportunities they haven't been able to grab that one extra win and that's what's uh, kind of eluding them right now they need to win this one against lsu they lose this one i don't know if they get in i i, I just don't think I think it's going to be tough, but I think there's a, a window there, but you're going to be sweating it out. And, uh, you know, kind of – sorry, the wind's blowing this phone. It's the same thing for the women. The women have lost six out of seven games. They've completely fallen apart here late in the season. Charlie Cream has them in their last – in his last four in. They're actually the last team in in the NCAA tournament, which I think they were second to last last year. So they are hanging on by a thread, at least by his projections. I don't know if that's going to be the case for the, the committee, which – a lot of times it isn't, but it just shows you kind of where they are right now, and they've played themselves into that. They've been absolutely terrible in the last part of the schedule and played some terrible basketball. And they came out uninspired against Texas A&M, looked really bad, uh, got ran off the court in that one against a team that has not been playing well itself. So the Bulldogs are, are at the mercy of the committee on the women's side. The men actually have a chance to uh, control their destiny. The women do not. So. Big one coming up for the men this week on Thursday in Nashville. Like I said, I'll be there. Selection Sunday is on Sunday, and both teams will be waiting out their name to hear if they make it into the NCAA tournament. We'll see if they do or if it's going to be time possibly for, you know, the SEC baseball season takes center stage or NIT, WNIT, I don't know. We'll see. But um, other than that, I'm going to let you guys go. Appreciate you for checking in. Once again, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, Maroon and White Daily YouTube channel. We need your subscription. Doesn't cost you a thing. Just click that subscribe button. You will get notified every single time I put up a video, press conferences, 
Uh, I'll have some interviews every now and then with folks. Myself and Paul Jones have done an interview or two. Um, and I'll have some more one-on-ones at some point, I'm sure. Uh, and like I said, we have these press conferences after every ball game and also these talking dog sessions, things like that. We, we have uh, posted periodically on here, and you guys will be notified every single time I post those. So make sure you subscribe to that. And subscribe to us over at maroonandwhitedaily.com. we got some, some great things going on right now, a $1 deal for the first month when you sign up, but I promise you, you're going to want to stay longer. But you can check us out for one month and just one dollar. Uh, we'd love to have you over there. Great message board community, people that uh, really know their stuff over there, whether it be basketball, football, baseball, even softball. We have some great softball fans over there too. And um, a, just a great community of posters that are knowledgeable, that have inside sources like us. Uh, you guys are going to love it over there. So come check us out and, and see what we got going on over there. All right, guys, I'll see you guys in Nashville. Some of you I'll see there. Some of you I'll see on here um, from Nashville. But other than that, I hope to catch you down the road.